Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 3 of October, November 2019. So let's move on to the questions. But first, as you can see, you will be given a list of formulas so you can use in this paper. So it'd be, it is pretty helpful, I would say, because in this list, there's a lot of useful things that is given to you, like these equations, also for the angles, okay? So with that being said, let's move on to question number one, okay? So here we have to solve the equation 5 ln bracket 4 minus 3 power x equal to 6. So you have to show your working and give your answer correct to three decimal places. So this is important for your marks, right? So as always, let's write this down. We have 5 ln 4 minus 3 power x equal to 6. So um, our main thing is we want to make x become the subject of formula, right? So step by step, first we have to send 5 over here. So we have to divide by 5. You get ln of 4 minus 3x. And what is 6 divided by 5? So 6 divided by 5 will be 1.2. So now we want to uh, send this ln over here. So that will be 4 minus 3x. Ln becomes exponential 1.2. So just to explain how is that possible, if you guys uh, don't know. So let's say I have 1.2. But 1.2 is also equal to 1.2 times ln of, exp of e. Because ln of e is equal to 1. That's why we don't see it, right? But now if you were to read this again, that will be ln of e. We send this number to the power. That will be 1.2. Now... If you were to replace this by this on this side, you'll have ln. Let me, uh, let me use a different color because this one is not useful. I mean, it is useful. It's only an, it's only an explanation, but it is not part of the uh, of the answer itself. So basically, this is a side note. So now you will have ln of four minus three power x is equal to ln of exponential one power two. Now, since you have ln on both sides, you can cancel out. And that's why you end up with this thing. 4 minus 3 power x equal to exponential 1.2. Okay. Now, uh, let's move on. So you will have... Let's make this one become the subject of formula. So you have minus 3 power x equal to exponential 1.2 minus 4. Now, 3 power x will be 4 minus exponential 1.2. Now, uh, we have to make x become the subject of formula, so you have to take ln on both sides. So whenever x is as a power, it is always um, something you need to uh, think about to make it comes down. So you take ln on both sides. It will be 4 minus exponential 1.2. Now, this will come down. You will have x ln of 3 equal to ln of 4 minus exponential 1.2 okay now as you can see we can make x become the subject of formula that will be ln of 4 minus exponential 1.2 divided by ln of 3 and by solving this you will have x but you have to express x in terms of three decimal place so one by one let's do the inside first 4 minus exponential power 1.2 ln of the answer divided by ln of 3 that should be minus 0.351, correct to three decimal place. And that will be your question number one. Now let's move on to uh, question number two. The curve with equation y has a stationary point in this interval between minus one and one. Now first thing is to find dy by dx and hence find the x coordinate of the stationary point correct to three decimal place so one by one if you want to find the stationary point you have to know that first step is at stationary point we know dy by dx is equal to zero so that's why we have to find dy by dx but now you observe this too it is a fraction right so if it is a fraction you have to use your quotient rule so dy by dx is equal to what? First, you have to write the denominator as it is. So 1 minus x squared as it is. 
and then you have to differentiate the numerator then you have to minus the numerator as it is and then times the differentiation of the denominator and now everything up here divide by the square of the denominator okay that's how you differentiate using the quotient rule now step by step we have to simplify so this is the same so 1 minus x squared times this this will become minus 2 exponential power minus 2x now minus this become the same times this will become minus 2x and everything divide by this so let's simplify some more um, what can we do here as you can see we can simplify again you will have minus 2 exponential 2x 1 minus x squared plus 2 uh, x exponential 2x that's the top divided by 1 minus x squared squared now we have these two are the same we can take it out for example right so you take it out you will have 2 exponential x so here minus remains so you bring in the minus you will have this minus this so that's a big bracket and then here you will have plus so x remains on this one and everything divided by 1 minus x squared over this so this will be your dy by dx okay that is your answer for dy by dx that is the first part now we have to find when this is equal to 0 to find the stationary point so let's equate that so now you will say at sp again we have to equate dy by dx equal to 0 now our equation will become like this 2 this this times x squared plus x minus 1 divided by 1 minus x squared square e is equal to 0 now since we have a fraction on this side we can write 0 as 0 over 1 now we can cross multiply right so by doing cross multiplication this one goes away this times 0 becomes 0 but this times 1 you have this one remaining okay so now we can solve this equation for the value of x now this is factorized already let's see uh, for this one and this one right so you have 2 exponential power minus 2x e is equal to 0 then x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0 now you will have exponential 2x e is equal to 0 now you have to solve this um, because it says your answer has to be in decimal place usually you cannot factorize you have to use your formula to give your answer in terms of decimal place right so a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 c is equal to minus 1 so x will be minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a so simplify x will be minus 1 plus minus root of 5 over 2 so x can be first value minus 1 plus root 5 divided by 2 that should be 0 0.618 or it can be minus 1 minus root of 5 divided by 2 minus 1.618 and for this one so um, if you want to make to get rid of exponential you will take ln on both sides so ln of exponential and ln of 0 you will have this and this is 1 right so ln e ln o so ln e is equal to 1 so this one goes away you will have ln o but now ln o is not valid you can check it is not valid so it will be invalid for this part of the uh, equation okay so you only have two solutions now going back to your condition you will see that you're looking for an x value between 
minus 1 and 1 okay so this one is outside your range so the only value that is between will be x is equal to 0 0.618 correct to three decimal place now let's move on to question number three now we have the polynomial x power 4 plus 3x power 3 plus ax plus b where a and b are constant is denoted by p of x when p of x is divided by this the remainder is this find the values of a and b okay so we have to use this information to find the values of, of a and b so first let's write down p of x e is equal to x power 4 plus 3x power 3 as you can see we don't have x power 2 so we write 0 x power 2 plus ax plus b that is your p of x written in full now we have been given that when p of x is divided by this the remainder is this so let's do a uh, long division because we know the answer and the quotient already i mean we know the remainder already so let's do that so let's do a long division for uh, p of x That'll be 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus ax plus b. Now, it says divided by this, so this will be your divider. Now, we know the remainder is this, but we keep this until the end, okay? So let's do step by step. So first question we ask is, how can you make this become x power 4? We have to multiply this by x power 2. That will become x power 4 plus x power 3 minus x power 2 so simplify this will go away so minus so 3 minus 1 will be 2 x cube 0 minus minus now become plus x square plus ax plus b now uh, simplify so here again how can you make x square become 2x cube you have to multiply by plus 2 first and then times x, right? It will have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x. So simplify. This one will go away. Now this is 1. 1 minus 2 is minus x squared. This is a... Um, so a minus minus become plus a plus 2x then plus b. So finally, uh, how can you make x squared become minus a minus x squared? You have to multiply by minus 1. Okay, so we get minus x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, that is the um, final part of this division. So this cancel out. Now we have a plus 2 minus minus become plus. So you have a plus 2 plus 1 x. And here you will have b minus 1. So simplify, you will have a plus 3 x plus b minus 1 as your remainder. But you also know that your remainder has been given to you right here. It is 2x plus 3. So which means this is equal to 2x plus 3. So we just have to compare the coefficients. So this one is equal to this. And this is equal to this. So let's write this down. We have two equations where a plus 3 is equal to 2. So a has to equal to minus 1. And we have b minus 1 is equal to 3. So b is equal to 4. So your answer for a and b is minus 1. b will be 4. And that is your question number 3. Now let's move on to question number 4. Part 1. Express this um, root of 6 sine x plus cos x in the form of this, where r is positive and alpha is between 0 and 90. State the exact value of r and give alpha correct to 3 decimal place. So this is also important here. So step by step, the first thing you should know is to find... So we have a sine x, for example, and then b cos x. This have to give you r sine of x plus alpha so we have to find the value of r r is equal to what as you guys must know by now it is a square plus b square square root of that alpha will be tan inverse of b over a okay so step by step 
So here we have root of 6 sin x plus 1 cos x. So that will be what? So we have to find r. r will be root of a square is 6 plus b square is 1. That will be root of 7. Now alpha will be the angle, tan inverse. b over a will be 1 over root of 6. So let's see what do we have here. So it has to be in degrees. Um, okay, that will be one divided by root of six. That should be twenty-two point two zero eight. Correct to three decimal places, right? Now we just have to replace the values in this equation. R is equal to root of seven, which is exact. Sine and x is x plus alpha is. 22.208 and that is your answer for part one now you may ask how where did I get this so this is something you should know by now because this is taught in your chapters but this is not given in your list of formula so make sure you know this uh, by heart okay now that is part one now let's move on to part two so say hence uh, solve this equation so, as you can see previously, because when you say hence, whenever you see hence in a question, you have to use the previous part of the question to solve this one. So, as you have seen previously, previously we have root of 6 sine x. So, here it is x and cos x. But now the angle just changed to 2 theta. Right? So, that is the, that is the only difference. So, basically, you get the same thing, which is root of 7 sine just the x will change to 2 theta plus the same alpha e is equal to 2 now we have to solve this equation so the first step is to make sine become the subject of formula so sine 2 theta plus 2 2 2 <laughs> 0 8 now be 2 divided by root of 7 now as you can see sine is positive it has to be in your first quadrant and this is just this in your second quadrant which is 180 minus theta so one by one let's find the angle so here first we find this is sine inverse of 2 over root of 7 so sine inverse of 2 divided by root of 7 that should be 49.1 So that is in your first quadrant, but you also have another answer, which is 180 minus this. Sorry. That will be 130.9. OK, so now we just have to um, equate to solve for the value of theta. Okay, So 2 theta is equal to 49.1 minus 22.208 and 130.9 minus 22.208 and theta will be equal to these values divided by 2 okay so 1 by 1 49.1 minus 22.208 divided by 2 that will be 13.5 degrees and 130.9 minus 22.208 divided by 2. That will be 54.3. So your two values of theta that satisfy your equation will be 13.5 and 54.3. And that will be your answer for question number 4. Now let's move on to question number five. The equation of a curve is given to you, as you can see, where A is a positive constant. Show that there's only one point on the curve that is tangent, uh, at which the tangent is parallel to the x-axis, and find the y-coordinate of this point. Now, so you have to understand what does that mean, right? What does it mean to be parallel to the y-axis? 
Now y axis, as you know, you have your x axis and your this is x, right? You have your y and you have your x axis. So as you can see, it is a horizontal line. So you can know that at x axis, what is your gradient? You would say gradient is equal to zero because it is a horizontal line. So if my tangent is parallel to my x-axis, it means that my gradient of tangent is also equal to zero. So when that is true, I have to find out how many points satisfy this equation. So one by one, of course. Now going back to the equation, it is given to you by two x square y minus x y square equal to a power three, where a is a positive constant. Now, to find gradient of tangent, the first thing you understand is that you have to find dy by dx. Okay, so let's do that step by step. So let's find dy by dx. That is our goal here. So differentiate with respect to x. So as you can see, this one is a product. We have to use your product rule. That will become two is, so we have to leave the first one as it is, and then do dy by dx of this one. So d by dx of y plus y as it is, then d by dx of 2x squared. That is the first step. Then you have to minus for this one, bracket. You can leave the first one as it is, and then do d by dx of x, so of y squared, then plus y squared as it is, then do d by dx of x that is your product rule now equal to this is a constant so when you differentiate that will be zero okay so no big deal now we just have to simplify one by one so this will become 2x squared multiplied by 1 times dy by dx so you have to know this one is an implicit implicit uh, differentiation so we have uh, we are differentiating with respect to um, to x, that's why you get this. Now plus y, this will become 4x. Now minus inside your bracket, here you will have x times 2y, dy by dx, plus y squared times 1. This is equal to 0. Now we have to find dy by dx, so we have to make dy by dx become subject of formula. So we have to first simplify and then group them together. Okay. So you have 2x squared dy by dx plus 4xy minus 2xy dy by dx minus y squared equal to 0. Now we can group these two together because they are both have same dy by dx. So we have 2x squared dy by dx minus 2xy dy by dx is equal to, we send this one over here become positive y squared, and this one over here become minus 4xy. Now you take out these two, dy by dx, factorize, you will have 2x squared minus 2xy, that will be minus 4xy. Now from this, that will give you dy by dx is equal to y squared, minus 4xy divide by this one and this will be your dy by dx okay so now as you have seen we are showing that when the gradient is equal to zero we have only one x value so let's see if that is true or not so as you have seen from uh, the question according to question we know that dy by dx so we need the tangent to be parallel to zero. So we have to equate that to zero. That will be this over 2x squared minus 2xy equate to zero. Now we have to find out how many values of x do we have for that is true. OK, so let's see. So um, of course, we have to cross multiply. You will have this become zero. This will become y squared minus 4xy is zero. Now we can simplify, we can send, uh, we can divide by y everywhere. You will have y minus 4x. 
equal to zero. As you can see, we have only one x value for when that happened. So 4x is equal to y. So x is equal to y by 4. This is shown as required. Because here we have to show what? We have to show that. Show that there's only one point on the curve at which this is true. So there's only one point at which this happens. So this is shown as required. Now, the question is not over yet. As you can see, we have to also find the y coordinate of this point. So to find the y coordinate, you have to go back to your equation of line, of the curve, sorry. The curve was given to you by 2x squared y minus xy squared equal to a cube. Now we know the value of x is equal to, at that point is, y over 4. So we have to find the, uh, the y coordinate, the, the y coordinate in this one. So let's replace and see what happens, right? So replace back in your equation. So you will have uh, 2x is y over 4 square y minus y over 4 y square is equal to a cube. Now you will have 2 times y square over 16 times y minus y cube over 4 is equal to a cube. So now if you want to uh, simplify, so this one goes away, you will have 8. Now if you want to uh, get rid of the denominators, you have to multiply by 8 everywhere. So you will have y cube minus 2y cube equal to 8a cube. So this is 1, 1 minus 2 will be minus 1, y cube. So y cube is minus 8a cube. Now you have to realize that 8 is also equal to 2 power 3, right? So you can write this down as minus 2a power 3. Now we can simplify for y will be cube root of minus 2a power 3. So these two will cancel out basically. You will have, so this is what, so just to understand, root of 3 is just power of 1 over 3. That will cancel out, so your answer will be minus 2a. So basically, at, at uh, the point at the value of x equal to y over 4, your value of y is given by minus 2a. And that is your answer for question number 5. Okay. Now let's move on to question number 6. Now the variables x and, x and theta are satisfy this equation. Now we have the domain for theta between 0 and pi, which is 180 degrees. It is given that x is equal to 1 when this is equal to this. So the reason why you're given this is to find the value of c afterwards, okay, in the end. But the main question here is, is to solve the equation, obtain an expression for x in terms of cos theta. That's your main uh, goal here. So uh, let's see how can we do this. So step by step as always. So we have sine half of theta dx over d theta. And we have this, n times cos of half theta. Now, the main goal is to group everything that is the same to one side and everything that is not to the other side. So here we have the x. Let's put this x over here. So you will have first step. So if you have to send this over here, you will be 1 divided by x plus 2 dx. Now we have to send this one over here that become cos half theta and d theta will be right here. And this will have, have to be like this. Right. So once you have this, you can solve this. You have to integrate both sides. So let's do one by one. So for this one, it's pretty simple. Integration of 1 over x plus 2 by dx. It is equal to a ln of x plus 2. 
that is the first step. Now for this one, of course, half theta over sine of half theta by d theta. So you have to solve this by substitution. If you don't know, you have to use substitution. So let, uh, let's use u is equal to sine half theta. So from this, we can try to find uh, du by d theta. So that will be cos half theta times half will be this one. So let's make d theta become subject. That will become 2 over cos half theta by du. Then replace this one back in your equation. So let's do this here. Integration, uh, you will have cos, cos is cos, right? Cos of half theta. This has become u. And d theta is equal to 2 over cos of this and then du. Now, as you have observed, these two moves cancel out. So you just have to integrate 2 over u du. And that should give you 2 ln u. But of course, we cannot leave it as u. We have to replace back to this one. That will give you 2 ln of sine half theta. Okay, so that will be your answer on one side. Now, let's write this down. So on the left side, you have ln of x plus 2 is equal to 2 ln of sine half theta plus c, which is your constant of integration. Now, so you have to find this value of c. As I have told you, we have to use these two values to find this value of c. So it is given to us that x is equal to 1, theta is equal to 1 over 3 pi. Okay, so what is 1 over 3 pi? Pi is 180 divided by 3, that should be 60 degrees. So let's replace and solve for the value of c. So one side you have ln of 1 plus 2 is 3 is equal to 2 ln of sine of half theta. So let's do that. So we have, let's use degrees, why not? So we know this is 60 degrees, so sine of half times 60. That should be 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 plus C. Now we can try to simplify. So C is equal to ln of 3 minus ln of, that should be um, 0 0.5 square, because if you simplify this, so that will be 2 ln of half, right? So that will be, you, have to, you can send this power on top, that will become half power 2. That will be ln of 1 over 4. Okay. Now this is equal to what? When you have a minus, you can combine them by dividing this value. So when you have this, you can send this on top, multiply, and you will have ln of 12. That is your value of C. So finally, your equation is equal to these values. So you have ln ln of x plus 2 equal to 2 ln of sine half theta plus ln of 12. But now that is not the main answer because as you can see we have to express, obtain an expression for x in terms of cos theta. That is our goal to make x become the subject of formula and having something in cos theta. So let's do this uh, again one by one. So always step by step because you don't want to uh, confuse yourself, right? So, so right now we have ln of x plus 2 equal to 2 ln of sine half theta plus ln of 12. So right now we have this. And we have to try to simplify to make x become your subject of formula. So first thing we have to get rid of those lons. So let's send this one, um, let's combine them, why not? So this will be the same on this side, which is x plus 2. Here you will have 2, we can send 2 over here as the power, become ln, sine, square, half of this, plus ln of 12. Now combining these two, you have ln, 
When you have plus, it is just multiply. 12 times sine square of half theta. Now here you have ln of x plus 2. Now as you observe, we have ln on both sides. We can cancel them so that will be crossed out, crossed out. So finally, you will have x plus 2 is equal to 12 sine square half of theta. Now your question is to express x in terms of cos theta. So how can you find cos from this? So you have to go to your list of formula here. So if you observe, we have to use this one. So here, let's see what do we have. So from the list, we have cos of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. But here we have half theta, so we need this to be half. So for example, you can try this thing, right? We can try to rewrite this formula as cos of 2 times half theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square of half theta. So simplify, you will have cos of theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine square of half theta. So from this, you can make this become the subject of formula. So 2 sine square of half theta is equal to 1 minus cos theta. So sine square of half theta is 1 minus cos theta divided by 2. So now we just have to replace back in your equation. So this, right? So you will have x plus 2 is equal to 12 times 1 minus cos theta over 2. So once you do that, you can just cancel those two. That will become 6. So you will have x plus 2 is equal to 6 minus 6 cos theta. So x is equal to 4 minus 6 cos theta. And that will be your answer for question number 6. x in terms of cos theta. So part A, so we have to find the complex number z satisfying this equation. Now, where z denotes a complex conjugate of z. So let's write this down. For example, let's say z, let z equal to a plus ib. Now the conjugate of z will be a minus ib. Pretty easy, right? So first step, let's first simplify this. We have z plus iz divided by conjugate of z minus 2 equal to 0. Now the first step is we will always want to eliminate the base, so we have to multiply by that everywhere. Multiply by conjugate of z. So you'll have z times conjugate plus iz minus 2 times conjugate of z. That will be 0. So now we just have to replace and solve to see what do we have. So we know z is equal to this a plus ib times a minus ib plus i times a plus ib minus 2 times a minus ib equal to 0, right? So when you say 0, it is 0 for real part plus 0 for imaginary part. So both is 0, okay? So just so you know what it means. Now let's expand one by one. This will become a square minus um, i a b plus i a b minus i square b square now these two will cancel out but you have to know that i square is what i square is equal to minus one so it means that this will be a square minus one times minus will be plus b square okay now this one will become uh, plus you have i a plus i square b. So as you can see here, we have i square, that will be minus 1. So it is plus i a minus b. Now you have minus 2 a plus i 2 b. So minus 2 a plus 
i to b is equal to 0 for real plus 0 for imaginary part. Now we have to regroup everything real on one side and everything imaginary on the other side. Now those are like together, right? So on one side you will have a square plus b square minus uh, b minus 2a. That is one side. Then you will have plus i outside, you have a plus 2b. And that is equal to 0 plus 0. So this is equal to this one. And this is equal to this one. So let's solve one by one. So we have the first equation, a square plus b square minus b minus 2a is equal to 0. And here we have a plus 2b is equal to 0 as well. So let's make a become the subject of formula. That will be minus 2b. So replace a back in this equation. So that will become a square will be 4b square plus b square minus b minus 2 times minus 2b equal to 0. That will be 5b square minus b plus 4b equal to 0. Now I'll simplify. We will have 5b square plus 3b is equal to 0 b outside you have 5b plus 3 is equal to 0 so of course we will not take the value of b to be 0 in that case so 5b plus 3 will be 0 or you can write this for now but we will not we will reject this value we'll take this one b will be minus 3 over 5 go back to a minus 2 times b and that will be 6 over 5. So finally, we can write down z is equal to x will be your real part, which is a, which is 6 over 5, minus i, 3 over 5 for your imaginary part. And that will be a complex number z. That will be for part a. Now let's move on to uh, part b. On a single organ diagram, sketch the loci of this equation and so these two equations. Right. So first you have to understand what is this looking for. So whenever you have z minus, let's put your bracket here, that will be 2i is equal to 2. So what it means is it is a distance of z from this point, it is always going to be 2. So whenever you see something like that, you have to know you have to draw a circle of radius 2 and center will be the point 2i. So it is basically 0 plus 2i, but we don't see 0, so we say it's 2i, right? That will be the first loci. And this one, it is tell you that the imaginary part for z, which is the i part, is equal to 3. So that will be same as saying that y is equal to 3. So it will be a horizontal line like this. So let's do one by one. So first let's draw your, uh, your axis for the diagram. So this will be your imaginary axis and that will be your real axis. That will be your imaginary axis. So let's label a few points. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but it always helps, right? That is i to i, 3i, 5i. And this will become Okay, let's write this down. That will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And let's write a few on this side as well. B minus i, minus, sorry, minus 1. It's not minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Okay, so let's do one by one. So first one is, as you can see, it is a circle of radius 2 center 2i. So 2i will be right here. That's your center. 
and the radius has length 2 so 1 2 will be here 1 2 will be here 1 2 will be here will be right here okay so now try your best to join the points by a circle right it doesn't need to be perfectly uh, exact it is only a sketch so try your best to make it a circle so that will be uh, like this okay and this will join like this Okay, not so great. Okay, and okay, as you can see, try your best to uh, make a circle of radius two. Now, okay, if you have a compass, you can just use a compass directly. That'd be much easier for you. You know, you don't have to do this. <laughs> that is the first one. Now we have to draw this one. This will be the it is a horizontal line at 3i so that will be right here that is your line um, I am equal to 3 okay so that will be your two locus as you can see and we don't have to shade anything no we don't have to shade anything so this is your answer for part 1 now for part 2 uh, we have to, uh, in the first quadrant, so in this quadrant right here, the two loci intersect at P. So they meet at a point P. As you can see, the point P is about here. Right. Find the exact argument of the complex number P. So we have to find the point P. So where is P, right? Well, how can you find this? Now, by observation, if you were to do this, you know this is 2. If you were to join 2 to the point P, we know that this is a horizontal line and this is the radius given by 2 and this is height this is right angle and this is what? so this is 1 and as you can see we have a right angle triangle so let's draw this again on this side just to understand what's happening so we have a triangle like this and we're trying to find the point P which is right here. So to find the point P, we have to find the x-axis and the x-value, sorry, the real value and the imaginary value. But as, as you can see, the imaginary value is already given to you by 3i. It is on 3, right? So we have to find this one. Now, this one is given to you by 1. This is 2. This is right angle. And we just have to find this side. We can use your Pythagoras theorem, right? So as you guys know, let me call this um, A, B, and C. Okay, so we know that A square plus B square is equal to C square. So A square is one, that is five, and sorry, this is sorry, we don't know B. B square, C square is four. So b squared will be 4 minus 1, that will be 3. So b will be root 3. So b will be root 3. As you can see, this length here will be root 3. So your x value, as you can see, for p, will also be root 3. So that will be the point p. So once you have the point p, so once you know the p is equal to this point, the argument is pretty easy. Argument of the point P is equal to tan inverse of 3 over root of 3. That should be 60 degrees. Or you can write pi by 3 in terms of radians. And that will be your answer for question number 7 part B. Let's move on to question number eight. So we have f of x equal to this one. Now we have to express f of x in terms of partial fractions. So as you can see, the first is first factor is 2x minus 1. It is linear, and this one is square, right? So this one has to be expressed in terms of a, <coughs> sorry, 2x minus 1 plus this will be 
bx plus c over x squared plus 2. Because it is squared, we have to have an x on top. So now we just have to uh, simplify and compare. So let's do that. So f of x is equal to, simplify this, that will become a x squared plus 2 plus bx plus c times 2x minus 1. So you have basically to combine them to make it look, this is of course let uh, this, right. But as you know, f of x is equal to this, so equate to 2x squared plus x plus 8 over 2x minus 1, x squared plus 2. Now, as you can see, these two are the same, so that cancel out, and this cancel out. So finally, you will have 2x squared plus x plus 8 is equal to ax squared plus 2 plus bx plus c times 2x minus 1. Now, we have to expand this part and simplify, right? That will be ax squared plus 2a plus 2bx squared minus bx plus 2cx minus c. Simplify. Let's group the uh, same terms together. That will become a plus 2b power x squared. Then we have plus 2c minus b x. And then we have plus 2a minus c. So this is basically equal to uh, this one. So that is one way of doing that. We can always um, compare the coefficients and find the values. So this way is kind of long, but you can do this if you want to. Now, the easiest way to do this is, is back in the first equation. Okay, This one will be the easiest way of solving this to find the values of a, b, and c. This is c right here. Okay. So I was trying to show you two ways. So this one will be by comparing the coefficients of each term. You can solve them simultaneously to find the values of a, b, and c. But let's do the easiest way, right? Why do we? Why would we want to go with for the hard way? So this one. So at first we have two x squared plus x plus eight e is equal to a x squared plus two plus b x c times 2x minus 1. Okay, so now we want to find the values of a, b, and c. So let's do one by one. So let's say if I want to find the values of which one? Let's say if I want to find the value of, I want to eliminate this term. So if I want to eliminate, I have to take the value of x as half. So that this becomes 0, and 0 times this will become 0 as well, right? So you have only this remaining. So let's do that. If x equals you, half, this will become 2 times 1 over 4, that will be half, plus half, plus 8, and that is equal to a times 1 over 4 plus 2, that is plus 0. So here we can solve for the value of a. So that will become 9 is equal to a times, so 2 plus 1 over 4, that is 2.25, right? So a is equal to what? Is equal to 4. That is your value of a. Now same, uh, same, kind, of, um, same kind of way, let's find the value of, of which one? Let's find the value of, let's eliminate one of them. So let's choose the value. So now we know the value of a. So let's replace that back first. We know that we have 2x squared plus x plus 8 is equal to 4 times x squared plus 2 plus bx plus c times 2x minus 1. Okay, so now let's, let's use something else. What if x is equal to 0? Right? So if x is equal to 0, you will eliminate the b. You will have only c remaining, and this, will, this is okay, right? So if x is 0, that will become 0 plus 0 plus 8 that is equal to 4 times 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus c, and that will be minus 1. Now simplify, you have 8 here. Here you will have also have 8, 
and here you will have minus c. So c is equal to 0. That's the other value. Okay, so now your function looks like this. 2x squared plus x plus 8 is equal to 4x squared plus 2 plus b of x times 2x minus 1 because c is 0. Now you want to find the value of b of x. So we can take um, any value now because it doesn't really matter because let's take x equal to 2 for example. Let's see what we get. So here we have 2 times this will be 8 plus 2 plus 8 4 times this is 2 now will be 6 plus 2b and that will be 3. That will become uh, 18 24 plus 6b. So 6b will be 18 minus 24 now be minus 6 so from this the value of b will be minus 1. So as you can see we have found the value of b, c and a. a is 4, b is minus 1 and c is 0. So that is one way of doing that and also second way is to compare the coefficients and solve simultaneously to find those values. But finally from those values we can have f of x in terms of partial fraction is equal to a will be 4 over 2x minus 1 b is equal to minus 1x over x squared plus 2 because c is 0 so that will be your answer for part 1 for the partial fraction part now let's move on to uh, question number part 2 so hence showing full working the integration for of this f of x so as you guys know already, you have to give your answer in the form of this, where c is an integer. So 5 over 1, f of x is now equal to 4, 2x minus 1, plus minus x over x squared plus 2 dx. So when you have two uh, fractions, you can separate them and do them one by one, right? So let's write down the first one. The first one is 5, 1, 4, 2x minus 1. That is by dx. That is equal to 4 is only a multiple. There will be ln of 2x minus 1 divided by 2. Right? Divide by the differentiation of the inside value. Now the limits has been given to you by 5 and 1. This will be 2. Simplify, you will have. So we have 2 ln of 2x minus 1 between 5 and 1 so solve you will have first value is 5 so 2 ln of 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1 is 9 minus 2 ln of 1 now ln of 1 is 0 so this will be 0 so your answer will be 2 ln of 9 for this one now next one we have to integrate this one so integration of minus x over x squared plus 2 dx so now as you can see uh, we have if you differentiate x squared you will have something in x so they will cancel out so in that case when you observe that you have to use substitution you can let u equal to um, x squared for example so you will have d u by dx equal to 2x. So from this you will have dx is equal to du by 2x. Now replace back in your main equation you will have what? Minus x and here you will have u plus 2 dx is du over 2x. As you can see these two cancel out. So you will have 5, 1, minus 1 over 2u plus 2 du. Now you can integrate for now. That will be minus ln of 2u plus 2 divided by 2. But now, of course, we have to replace the value of u 
back to x. So you will have minus ln of 2 times x squared plus 2 divided by 2. Limits will be 5 and 1. So let's solve this one by one. So first one will become minus uh, ln 5 will be 2 times 5 squared plus 2 52 and then minus that will become 2 times 1 plus 2 that will be 4 over 2 so that will be so we can take out the minus half outside that will become ln of 5 2 minus ln of 4 so 5 2 divided by 4 that should be 13 so that will be minus half ln of 13 so let's see uh, what do we have okay so going back to the main equation here we have to solve this one this is, this is the equation we have to solve right so you will have the first one as you could see so this was 5 1 4 over 2x minus 1 minus so plus minus x over x squared plus 2 dx the first one became 2 ln of 9 and plus the second one became minus half ln of 13 okay so now we have to simplify them so that will be ln of 81 plus ln of 13 power half but the thing is, I think there must be a mistake somewhere because your answer needs to be in this form where c is an integer, right? So this doesn't seem to be an integer in that case. This seems to be something, um, I made a mistake somewhere. So let's see. This one seems to be, to be uh, right. Pretty uh, straightforward, right? This one is okay. But there must be a mistake somewhere around here. So uh, let's observe. We have minus 2x that will be 2x 2 2 minus um, so you see this is 4 right that should be 4 right here not 2 4 and this is 4 and this should be 4 right so that is the mistake I made for this so we have to replace so 2 times 5 square plus 4 that is 54 and this one will become 2 that should be 6 that will be minus half 54 and 6 that should be 9 so you should have this answer for this part okay so let's replace that will become this is not right that should be minus half ln of 9 of 9 now we have to simplify this as you can see we have the number here we can send this on top to become the power become ln of 9 minus half that will become ln of 1 over 9 power half that is ln of 1 over 3 so replace back you have ln of 81 plus ln of 1 over 3 and when you have plus here it is simply multiplying the inside by each other 1 over 3 that will be 1 and this will be 27 that will be ln of 27, which is an integer, where c is 27. And that will be your question number 8. Okay, so let's move on to question number 9. So it is given that integration of this uh, expression is equal to 3, between the limits of a and 0. Where a is a constant, it is between those two values, okay? Now, part 1, we have to show that a satisfies this equation. So of course, uh, we cannot do this directly. We have to solve this to find this, right? So let's do this one first. So we have to find integration of x cos one third x by dx. So now if you, if you observe, we have two different kind of functions, right? Whenever you have, this one is a linear algebraic function. This one is a trigonometry. Uh, function. So there are two different kinds of function. 
when you uh, see that you have to use your integration by parts now you have to know which one has to be u and one which one has to be dv right so for this we choose we use a method called the late method just to help you decide which one to use this is your algebraic function it will be here and this one is your trigonometry function it will be here so whichever happened first will be your u so here we have a happen first so u will be this one and then this will be your dv okay now going back to uh, integration by parts as you guys must know by now it is equal to u v minus root of so v times du dx right so we have to find those values so here we have u is equal to x so du is equal to 1 right and here we have dv is equal to cos one third x so v is equal to integration of this that should be sine of one third x divided by one third that should be three now we just have to replace these values back in your formula so this will equal to u is x times v is this one three sine of one third x minus root of v is uh, this one 3 sine of 1 third x times du is 1 dx so now let's solve this again you will have 3x sine of 1 third x minus this will become so 3 is only a multiple we can take out 3 and we have to integrate sine function sine will be minus cos 1 third x divided by 1 third and that will become simplify again you will have 3x sine of 1 third x plus 9 cos of 1 third x between the limits of a and 0 so now we have to replace one by one so when x is equal to a you will have 3a sine of 1 third a plus 9 cos of 1 third a minus 3 times 0 sine of 0 plus 9 cos of 0 let's solve and see what do we have so here we have 3a sine of 1 third a plus 9 cos 1 third a as it is minus this will become 0 and what is 9 cos 0? That should be 9 plus 9. So you will have 3a sine of 1 third a plus 9 of cos 1 third a minus 9 is equal to 3. So write 3. Now we have to make um, a become the subject of formula. So let's send everything to one side. You will have Three, not everything but this two to one side 3a sine one third a is equal to 3 plus 9 is 12 minus 9 cos one third a now from this we have to make a become subject of formula so a will be 12 minus 9 cos of one third a divided by 3 sine of one third a now if you observe these are all multiples are 3 so we can divide by 3 everywhere you will have a is equal to 4 minus 3 cos of 1 third a over sine of 1 third a and this is shown as required that is for part 1 now uh, for part 2 we have to verify that a lies between uh, 2.5 and 3 right so here right now we have a is equal to 4 minus 3 cos 1 third a over sine of 1 third a so we have to let this equal to f of x let this equal to f of x 
So basically, we have to use each of, of those values. For example, if a equal to 2.5, right, one of those values, what is f of a? f of 2.5. That will be. So this is f of a actually, because here we don't have x, we have a, so f of a, okay? That will be 4, so we have to use radians. 4 minus 3, cos of 1 third times 2.5 divide by sine one third times 2.5 that should be 2.679 as you can see it is uh, so 2.5 is less than 2.679 okay now next one here a is equal to this value 3 what is f of 3 so that will be 4 minus 3 cos of one third times 3 divide by sine of one third times three, which is one basically. That should be 2.827. So three is more than 2.827. As you can see at first it was less, now it is more. So you write down since there was a change in sign. Change in sign between the values of a equal to 2.5 and a equal to 3 it means that a lies between 2.5 and 3 okay so here i think uh, my ink was over i didn't i can't see the question anymore but I think we have to find the value of, of A, right? Correct too. Let's see, uh, let me check to how many decimal places. I'll be right back. Okay, so from the question I can see that it shows we need to at least show the uh, iteration correct to five decimal place and then have your answer only to three decimal place. Okay, so let's do that. So right now we have A is given to you by four minus three cos one third A over sine of one third A. So the equation will look something like this. So basically, uh, on your question, you will say a m plus 1, that will be 4 minus 3 cos 1 third uh, a n over sine of 1 third a n. So let's the first a b, the first value will be exactly in between those two. So to find the midpoint, we take 2.5 plus 3 divided by 2, 2.75. Okay, that's the first a. So 2.75 is your answer, okay, sorry, that is your answer. So we have to find the new value of A, so A2, that will be 4 minus 3 cos of 1 third times answer, oh, sorry, let's try again, <laughs> I made a mistake here, so 2.75 is your answer. So 4 minus 3 cos 1 third times your answer divide by sine 1 third answer. So that will be 1.6997 nine, so I think it may be a mistake because it should be only between 2.5 and 3. I think my equation is wrong. So 2.75, that should be in terms of radians. So we have 4 minus 3. Cos inside should be answer over. Oh, I see what's wrong now because we have to put everything together first. So bracket first, minus 3 cos of 1 third times A divide by sine 
of one third times a that should be the right one so as you can see this should give you the right answer so very important here not to make any stupid mistakes because you will lose mark for really um, stupid reasons so we have to write correct to five decimal place that will be 2.73733 Four will be 2.73648 uh, A7 will be 2.73 Six one three. You have a eight two point seven three six one two, and as you can see, it is not changing anymore. It's two point seven three six one two, and take a last one. So a of ten will be the same thing. So a of ten will be two point seven three six one two, but your answer have to be written as three decimal place. So two point seven three six. And that will be your answer for question number nine. Okay, so let's move on to uh, question number 10. The line L has equation R equal to I plus 3J minus 2K plus lambda times I plus 2J plus 3K. Okay, this is the equation of line L. Okay, now the plane has equation this one. 2X plus Y minus 3Z equal to 5. So the first thing I want to ask you is, Given the equation of a plane, what is the normal of that plane? Then you will say normal is equal to the coefficient of all these three. That will be 2, 1, and minus 3. That will be the normal of that plane. Okay, now we can move on to question number 1. Find the position vector of the point of intersection of L and P. So we know that these two will meet, and we have to find the point of intersection. Okay. So now let's express r in terms of vectors. So we write down 1, 3, minus 2, plus lambda times 1, minus 2, and 3. Now we can also simplify this again. That will become 1 plus lambda. This will become 3, minus 2, lambda, and minus 2 plus 3, lambda. Okay, that is your equation of line. This is your x, your y and your z. Just remember this, okay? Now for your plane you have 2x plus y minus 3z equal to 5. Now whenever you had to find a point of intersection in the past you always have to solve simultaneously. So here again same thing, right? So here we have x is this, y is this, z is this to so replace in your equation. You will have 2 times x that will be 1 plus lambda, y is 3 minus 2 lambda, minus 3 times z, which is minus 2, plus 3 lambda, equal to 5. So now let's solve this. We will have to find the value of lambda for which this is true. So 2 plus 2 lambda, plus 3 minus 2 lambda, plus 6 minus 9 lambda, equal to 5. As you can see, uh, those two will cancel out. You will have 2 plus 3 plus is 5 plus 6, that will be 11. And minus 9 lambda equal to 5. So 9 lambda will be 11 minus 5 will be 6. So lambda will be 2 over 3. So since we have found the value of lambda, we have to find the position of the point of intersection. So we just have to replace lambda in this uh, value here. So, the points, the position, let's write down position, vector of point of intersection is equal to 1 plus lambda, which is 2 over 3, 3 minus 2 times lambda, and minus 2 plus 3 times lambda. Okay, let's simplify it to see what happens. So first one is 1 plus 2 over 3, that should be, um, that should be 1, 5 over 3. 
and this should be 3 minus 2 times 2 over 3 that should be 5 over 3 as well and then you have minus 2 plus 3 times 2 over 3 that should be 0 so let's rewrite this down as given here in terms of i g and k you will have 5 over 3 i plus 5 over 3 j and that will be your answer for part one now uh, for part two calculate the acute angle what is acute angle it is angle between 0 and 90 okay so between those two okay now we have to find that angle between l which is a line and p which is a plane so if you um, you have to make a drawing to understand what's happening so plane is plane p for example as you know for plane we are given the the normal of the plane which is in this direction this is your uh, normal let's write that here normal now we have a line l which goes to the plane at at an angle let's say this is your line l and you want to find the uh, the angle of the uh, between the between the line and the plane but first what we can do is we can find the angle between the line and the normal just to check okay so let's do that direction of normal has been given to you as n of normal is equal to as you can see 2 minus oh, 2 1 minus 3 that is the uh, direction of the normal so 2 1 minus 3 now direction of line L so let's write direction of L is given to you by this 1 minus 2 3 that will be 1 minus 2 3 so now let's find the angle between those two first so to find the angle we have to find the dot product that is modulus of those two cos of theta so we have to find this value of theta first so basically replace you will have 2 1 minus 3 that will become 1 minus 2 3 equal to modulus will be 2 squares 4 so 2 square plus 1 square plus minus 3 square and this one will be same thing uh, 1 square plus minus 2 square plus 3 square and cos of theta now let's simplify for each of those values so this one will become 2 square plus 1 plus 9 should be 14 and this one should become 1 plus 4 plus 9 should be 14 as well and this is 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 minus 9 should be minus 5 that will be cos of theta now cos of theta will be minus 5 over 14 so theta will be cos inverse of that value right now let's do that we will have minus 5 divided by 14 and cos inverse let's use degrees that will be 110 degrees 110 uh, degrees you can put 9 as well if you want to but 110 should be about the angle which is between now it is between the um, the normal and the the line so this big angle here is given by 110 now this is not what you want to find you want to find the angle between the uh, the line and the plane so one way of visualizing this is let's draw let's show this another way so what we can do is we can move the plane close to the line so your normal will be same thing this direction so the line will be let's say the line will be moved close to the plane it will be uh, let's use a different color um, green about this direction right that is the line L that is your normal now this is the the surface of the of the plane we uh, found this as it is horizontal the surface of the plane right so the angle here this big angle here as we have seen as is found to be 110 but we only want to find this angle which is the angle between the line L and the surface of the plane so if you observe normal and the plane is 90 degrees so this will be 
110 minus 90. So the acute angle is equal to 110 minus 90. That should be about 40.9 degrees, or you can just write 40 degrees for your answer. Now that will be part two. Now let's move on to part uh, three of this question. So here we have a second plane Q is perpendicular to the plane P. So this is important here. And it contains the line L. So the plane Q contains the line L. Find the equation of, of Q. Q is the plane Q in the form of AX plus BY plus uh, CZ. So I think the, uh, the best way to proceed with those kind of questions is making a sketch so you know uh, what's happening and what can you uh, use to find your answer. So let's say we have the plane Q here, for example. That is your plane Q. And plane Q has the line L. Right, so let's, let me draw the normal first. The normal of the plane Q will be like this and it has the line L on the plane Q line L let me use a different color for that that should be line L okay let's call this one L and this is your normal of your plane Q so normal of Q now we have been given that these the plane Q and the plane So this is your plane, plane um, P is perpendicular. The angle are perpendicular, as you can see. So for a plane, of course, we have their normal. So let's say this is the normal of plane P. So th this is also perpendicular. So the normal of plane P and normal of plane Q is perpendicular. And as ob by observation, you can see that the, the line is also perpendicular to your normal of plane Q. Okay, so by using this drawing, you can find the equation of G. But first, let's see what can we derive. We have to use this information to derive something. So let's first write down. Do you know the uh, normal of Q? No, you don't know. So let this becomes A, B, and C. So the reason why we choose A, B, and C is because, as you can see here, we have to write your answer in terms of A, X, B, Y, and C, Z. And these three are basically the direction you have to use to find the uh, normal. So that's why we choose A, B, and C. For example, now we know that the normal of plane P has been given to you from part uh, 1, which is 2, 1, minus 3. So 2, 1, minus 3. And what is the direction of line L has been given to you as well from part 1? It is 1, minus 2, and 3. So 1, minus 2, and 3. So let's see what equations we can form based on what we are provided. Now, the first thing we can see is that the normal of plane Q, and the normal of Q, and the normal of P, they are both at right angles. So the first information we have is normal of Q dot product of P is supposed to give you 0. That's the first information. So let's see what can we have. So Q will be A, B, and C dot product of 2, 1, and minus 3. That is 0. Now, if you want to solve this, that will be 2a plus b minus 3c is equal to 0. So that will be your first equation. Now, next one, uh, we have this one. The direction of line L and the normal of uh, plane Q is also perpendicular. So we have direction of L dot product of NQ has also to give you 0. So let's solve this equation. That will be 1 minus 2, 3 dot of A, B, C also gives you 0. So you will have A minus 2B plus 3C is equal to 0. That is your equation number 2. So now we can try to solve them simultaneously. We can just um, do 1 plus equation number 2. So 2 plus this will be 3a and this plus this will be minus b and this will become 0 equal to 0. So from this you can see that uh, b 
is equal to 3a. That's the first equation. Now, we can take any values now because we can just try out to find the direction of uh, the normal. So let's assume that a is equal to 1 because it's the easiest value to use, right? So b has to be equal to um, 3. Now, going back to your main equation, replace that back, you will have 2 times a plus 3 minus 3c is equal to 0. So 3c is equal to 5. So c will be 5 over 3. So now, of course, we like to use whole numbers for direction. We don't like fractions, so we have to write down the ratio of A, B, and C. So A is 1, B is 3, and C will be 5 over 3. And as you guys must know by now, if you want to eliminate the denominator, you have to multiply by the denominator everywhere. So that will become 3, 9, and 5. So basically, you have found your NQ, the normal of plane Q will be equal to 3, 9, and 5. So basically, if you replace back in your main equation, right now you have 3x plus 9y plus 5z equal to d. Now you have to find this d. To find this d, you have to go back to your drawing. You can see that on the plane Q, your line L lies on the plane Q. So what was the equation of line L? It was this, right? So it means that any point on line L is also on plane Q. So we can choose this point, saying that we know that uh, according to question, we know a point on, on plane Q that we can use is um, 1, 3, and minus 2. That is definitely your x, y, and z. Now replace everything back in your equation to find the value of d, right? So 3 times 1 plus 9 times q, y plus 5 times z should be equal to d. So now we just have to solve. So that will be 3 plus 27 minus 10 equal to d. So d will be, let's use your calculator because you don't want to make mistakes, right? That will be 20. So finally, if you write this down, that will be 3x plus 9y plus 5z equal to 20. And that will be your answer in the form of this. So that was the last question of this paper. I hope that was somewhat helpful. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you soon.